Hello and welcome to another video on this channel. We are all aware that the DV 2024 program is over. And in today's video, I will be sharing with you the final report concerning the DV 2024 program. So let's go into it. And in this report, we will be considering different aspects of the DV 2024 program. To begin, let's first look at a parameter of the program that we sometimes turn a blind eye to. And that parameter is the comparison between the highest case number in the different regions and the final cutoff numbers in those regions. Every year, at the end of the first quarter, Zatishas publishes the first CR data for the ongoing program. And from that data, we get to know what the highest case numbers are in the different regions. Now, at the end of the program, or just before the program comes to an end, then we get to know the final cutoff number that is where interview scheduling is supposed to start. So, comparing both of those parameters allows us to know how well the program performed in each of the regions. In a moment, I'm going to place on your screen the comparison between the highest case number and the final cutoff numbers in the different regions during the DV 2024 program. By that, we will be able to tell in which regions applicants had a better chance of being scheduled for interview on the overall. So here is the comparison in question. And as you can see, there were two regions that went current, the Africa region and the North America region. Now, when it comes to the other regions, we see that interview scheduling or the final cutoff numbers fell short of getting close to the highest case numbers in those regions. Now, we are not going to consider them one at a time because of time, but we can see from what we have on the screen that the Oceania region was the region where the scheduling of interviews stopped farthest from the highest case number. And this means that in the DV 2024 program, the Oceania region was the region with the highest percentage of applicants having low prospects of being scheduled for interview. Now, when it comes to the final cutoff numbers that were established in most of the regions, we noted at the time that those cutoff numbers, in most cases, observed an unnecessary leap. Now, what that did, not only in the Africa region, but in other regions as well, was that it brought into play the issue of embassy performance. In other words, that leap allowed embassies that had a better performance to go about interviewing many more cases than those that had bad performance. And this is the second year running that we have observed that kind of leap just at the end of the program. So that could be part of the strategy of the visa office to ensure that all of the visas or almost all of the visas on offer are actually issued out. We saw that during the DV 2023 program, it was repeated during the DV 2024 program. So there is a possibility of us observing that or witnessing that again in the DV 2025 program. Now, the downside of that is that it plays against the essence of case numbers in the diversity visa program. According to the law governing the diversity visa program, those applicants with low case number should have a higher chance of being scheduled for interview and those with high case numbers or the highest case numbers should have low chances of being scheduled for interview. But with such a leap, things happen the other way around. This made some applicants with very high case numbers to be scheduled for interview, whereas those with low case numbers were not. Now, 
In spite of that shortcoming, the DV 2024 program can be considered as a normal program, and that for a number of reasons. For those of you who have been following since the beginning of the DV 2024 program, I noted how the graph of issuances appears in a normal diversity visa program. In a moment, I'm going to put on the screen the graph of the DV 2024 program. It is true that we do not have issuances for the month of September up to now, but you can see the trend of a normal diversity visa program when you consider the issuances graph of the DV 2024 program. So this is it. And without much commentary, you can see the trend of a normal diversity visa program when you consider this graph concerning issuances for the DV 2024 program. Now, the next thing has to do with the ending of the program. Unlike in the DV 2023 program, where the program came to an abrupt end at the end of the first week in the month of September, the DV 2024 program ran its course up to the September 30th deadline. That is another indication that the DV 2024 program was a normal program. Now, let's consider the final SEAC data table, the table that was published by Zatitius after the final interviews were conducted on September 30th, 2024. Now, in addition to the factors that we just saw, there are others in this table that point to the fact that the DV 2024 program can be considered as a normal program. For example, there is the rate of issuances in the DV 2024 program. There is also the rate of refusals in the DV 2024 program. Then the number of cases that remained on 221G administrative processing, as well as the number of applicants or cases that did not turn out for their diversity visa interviews. All of these can be considered as characteristics of a normal diversity visa program. And then perhaps the most telling is the number of issuances in the DV 2024 program. As you can see in the table, a total of 53,368 visas were issued out at your different embassies and consulates. Now, if we should add to that the number of issuances from adjustment of status cases in the United States, that will take us closest to the number of visas on offer during a diversity visa program. So, to summarize, we can say that the DV 2024 program is over. There were a number of irregularities observed during the program, but it seems that what could be considered as irregularities are gradually becoming the new normal in the diversity visa program. And for that reason, the DV 2024 program can be considered as a normal diversity visa program, perhaps the most normal diversity visa program ever. Having said that, I would like to congratulate those of you who were successful in being issued a diversity visa during the DV 2024 program and to those who were unfortunate for one reason or another to not have been issued a diversity visa during the DV 2024 program, I would like to encourage you and wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Which brings us to the end of this final DV 2024 report. Thanks for watching it. I may not see you again, but coverage of the diversity visa program continues on this channel, this time with 
DV 2025 program. Thanks for watching and goodbye.